the International Children's Day of Broadcasting and uh, that programming continues after this uh, particular program because this is a special uh, program that we are bringing to your screens this afternoon here on ZNBC uh, TV1. Now, 44 years ago and specifically between the 7th and 9th of March 1978, Wanga District was uh, under siege. Ian Smith's uh, Southern Rhodesian uh, Air Force and uh, ground troops heavily bombarded and carried out assaults on Kavala Manja and Kakaro. Zambian troops supporting freedom fighters from Zimbabwe's People's Liberation Army, Zipra, repelled uh, the insurgencies. Therefore, uh, those deaths obviously came to the full. Injury and sad memories indeed uh, do characterize uh, that part of our history. Now, that where uh, that that uh, that that, that uh, you know narrative has been documented by Yezi Arts um, in 2007, and annually uh, commemorations in remembrance of those who lost their lives in this horrendous and human attack uh, have been uh, held since uh, 2008 in Kavalamanjo and uh, Kavalamanjo. Bigger pardon and uh, Kakaro. Now, I'm honored to have a uh, you know, gentleman here who going to give us more information around this piece of history, a very important piece of history I must emphasize, and that uh, every Zambian must, you know, um, care to just uh, uh, get a share in terms of information around this particular, you know, history. My guests include uh, Brigadier General, uh, you know, uh, Gino uh, Muke, Director General Civil Military Affairs uh, from the Zambia Army. It's great to have you on the program. Good afternoon. I'm also joined by uh, Abdon Yazi, uh, who, Yezi, pardon, who is a film producer from Yezi Arts. It's great to have you in the program. Thank you, and uh, good afternoon. Awesome. Um, I'm also uh, honored to have uh, Colonel uh, Rukonad uh, Mwenda, who is retired. It's great to have you on the program, sir. Uh, I admire your, your, your accolades on your jackets. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really great to have you all, uh, on the program. Let's begin by, for some of our viewers out there who maybe, uh, you know, this could be shocking but they are hearing, for this, uh, hearing on this uh, particular you know, piece of history for the very first time. I'd like you just to break it down and take us back to memory lane by bringing us up to speed with regards to what this um, you know, uh, anniversary is all about. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry. Uh, this uh, anniversary involves uh, uh, Zambian troops who were deployed uh, alongside the, the Zimbabwean uh, freedom fighters. Mm. So it so happened that uh, uh, that time, uh, in March 1978, the Zimbabwean government, uh, led by Ian Smith by then, uh, they were following their, uh, 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 these freedom fighters who were deployed in the Zambian side. That is across the uh, Longwa River. So on that particular day, they bombed the village. And so many soldiers and uh, civilians were killed in that village of uh, Kavaramanza. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, there was also some vehicle which was uh, uh, coming from Rongwa Bridge area towards the Rongwa, uh, 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 Rongwa district. So they also mistook it to be a vehicle which was uh, uh, coming to reinforce. So it was also bombed, and yet that vehicle had only civilians. So those people died at Kakaro village. Mm. So uh, in a nutshell, uh, that is what, uh, what happened on that uh, particular uh, day. Mm. And uh, from that time, uh, it was quiet until uh, Mr. Yezik uh, wrote a book about uh, uh, that incident. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, we started commemorating to remember our, our colleagues who died during that time. All right. Sure. Mr. Ezi, you, you want to add? Uh, yes. Um, it's, um, it's a piece of history of uh, what one would classify as um, an untold story mm -hmm. All right. of the liberation struggles of uh, Southern Africa. Uh, Zambia played a very important role, especially in terms of ensuring that uh, countries um, in the southern southern region uh, got political independence. And uh, it did not come easy. It called for a lot of sacrifices. And um, a country like Zambia, which housed almost several freedom fighters, um, was also a target. Mm -hmm. So um, the incident that happened in Luangwa, uh, many know it as Feira District, um, and particularly Kavalamanja and Kakaro. 
resulted in heavy bombardments and uh, ground assaults over a period of about 72 hours, which was almost about three days. So from March 6th all the way up to 9th, it was basically mayhem in that area. And as um, Brigadier General has mentioned, um, the costs came in the form of loss of life in terms of people being injured, people being displaced, and uh, others being uh, injured. And it just disturbed the normal life of the people in that area. And um, as it may be, from about um, 1978 when the incident happened, it remained unknown until about 2007 when we did do some documentary around it. And I think it was uh, really good to think about how best to remember what happened. Right. Uh, the symbolism of the commemorations is to remind ourselves of what took place and why we were sacrificing. So it was really a war of sacrifice. All right. Um, I noticed that you, you were nodding, sir. Um, and and, and, and uh, <laughs> I, I guess you want to add more to what has been said. <laughs> I mean, it's the same story, but obviously it's told <laughs> differently <laughs> depending on how you <laughs> you understand it, isn't it? No, where I wanted to add was that yeah. uh, you can imagine where a village is bombed. What happened to these civilians, mm -hmm. which is mixed with the soldiers? So it was the only who sees the way all of the city running away from different directions. Mm -hmm. There's no saying that this is a soldier, this is a civilian. This is a, a, a freedom fighter. All of them were running to the, to, for their lives. You see. Mm -hmm. So if somebody just arrived that time when the people were running up like that, it was sad. Mm. It was a sad experience. Right. Yes. Now, I, I know that uh, around this time, you, uh, more often than not, you're around that area. You know, w what memories, you know, uh, I evoked when you get into that in, into this area, you know, I mean when you talk about people dying um, Some innocent people so to speak who were not even part of the, the didn't belong to that area You know dying because they were found at the wrong place at the wrong time and things of that sort Yeah the, um, Of course on the uh, military point of uh, view mm -hmm. is that it, it, it was a very sad situation mm -hmm. Uh, because uh, our role is to protect the population and also the integrity of the, the nation. Now, in a situation like that one, you know, it was not a, a, a military deployment, as per se, because we were just helping the other uh, uh, gentlemen across. So the deployment was some kind of mixed with the, the, the freedom fighters. So it's, it was like uh, those people were there for so many days trying to see and understand what was going on in daily life. So they had planned it so well yeah, uh, in that they were monitoring all the activities. So when the day came, they knew that this time we will catch them. And uh, it was not our own. We were just caught up because we were just on the side of... Uh, uh, helping the other uh, Zimbabwe in that time uh, in southern Rhodesia. So when they came, it was very, very uh, difficult uh, because they had not come for us. We were just found also <laughs> in, in that situation. <laughs> so, and uh, at that time, I think the, the, the president mentioned that it was not, a, it was not our war with them. They were following their, their well, freedom fighters. Like mm -hmm. So it was very difficult to go in uh, fully as a, an army to repel them and uh, things like that because it, it was uh, something which was uh, uh, not planned that we are going to have such a situation. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it was very difficult that the civilians found themselves in that situation. Of course, uh, something was being done uh, to protect those, except that the deployment was in the village. You know, the, the Kaparamanda is a village. They are, mm -hmm civilians there and so forth. So it was really uh, uh, difficult to secure the civilians by then right. because those uh, freedom fighters were mingling with the, the locals. Mm. So to separate when you are up there, because they use the jets, 
So to separate who is who, just like you mentioned, it was very difficult. Very difficult. Yes, so they must be throwing the bombs anywhere where there is population. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, you've told the story, you know, uh, Mr. Yezi, and I'd like to get your, um, I know it's, it's a sad narrative, but there's always one one part that just touches your heart in a special way. When, it, when you're telling that story, uh, you know, um, about this incident, what, what caught your attention the most? Um, I think the first thing that caught my attention is that we were not taking pride as a country mm -hmm. of how much sacrifices we made. Um, many saw our support for the liberation struggles as a foreign policy related issue. We saw this beyond that. We saw this as the commitment of the Zambian people to be in a position to ensure that their brothers and sisters in the sub-region uh, also attained political and economic freedom. I'll be silent on economic freedom, but I'll go much more on political freedom. Yeah. So I saw this story much more being told, the narrative being told from outside the country, and very rare were we telling it ourselves. And uh, true to it, by the time we got into Kalvalamanja 2007, it was more or less like, why are we not telling our own stories? Why are we not honoring the people who went quite far in terms of losing their lives or getting injured for purposes of liberation. Mm -hmm. Again, there was another aspect to it, and I think this touches almost on all the sides of Zambia. If you look at it, we were engulfed with different kinds of liberation uh, movements and liberation wars uh, across the, the spectrum of our, of our boundaries. And there is a strong correlation between being on the front line, on the border line, mm -hmm. and lacking development. And so by the time we're getting into 2007, we're saying, okay, is there a way in which we can actually start talking on getting these places developed since the wars had come to an end? So we went into it for looking at this from different perspectives. But each year that we get there, we always look at it in terms of how do we honor all those who lost their lives? And how can we better the lives of those that are there now? Mm, interesting. Um, I'd like to get your opinion, uh, you know, Colonel uh, Mwenda, on, on the issue of, because this does go a long way in telling the story of how Zambia was involved in, 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 in uh, giving independence to the region, isn't it? Yeah. What, what, to what extent does this part, you know, amplify that fact, so to speak? The fact that, look, Zambia did not just care about her own independence, but also the independence of the neighboring countries. See, to <coughs> let me first uh, look up from the world the, the genocide mm -hmm. on the deployment part of all the government. Mm -hmm. Government is a, a village. Now, when you get into the village, southern part of it is a, a river. All right? Okay. The banks of the river where the freedom margin were. Just on top of the, the, on the northern side, that's where the, the soldiers were. Now, when the soldiers and freedom fighters, when they go for a bath, they will just mix, mix up villagers and the, like that. So when the, somebody was bombing the, the place, had no, uh, Choice. Had no choice. Who was there? Had no choice. He just went straight out. Now, if if those uh, freedom fighters were somehow a bit far from the, of course, it were along the river bank, away from the village, and also the soldiers had they gone a bit of bad over the Karu, Karu River. There's a, a, a river there called Karuru. Definitely. The jet would have not involved the, the village. The village. So the village came in because of mingling up with the soldiers and the freedom fighters. Now, when you come to the, your question of saying, how did Zambia come in? That's what was the question, eh? It did. Yes. Zambia from the beginning was known to support the freedom fighters. So by virtue of that, uh, wrong. We found ourselves the two that are being in the, in the government. All right. Mm. With us, we were doing a noble cause of supporting these freedom fighters. At the same time, uh, save the 
our own country. country. Mm. Yes. Let's be something more. Mm. Uh, you, 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 you want to add? Yes. Um, <coughs> you see, uh, when you are free, and maybe your neighbors are not free, you cannot call yourself uh, to be free. Mm. Uh, a live example is even in our uh, communities. If he, your neighbor is always fighting with the wife, and every time knocking at night, help, 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 help. When you want to sleep, <laughs> so you cannot say you are not enjoy yourself. No, you not enjoy it. So hence the Zambia took it upon itself that uh, it, it, it is not free until the neighbors are, are free. So that's how we we found ourselves in that in that situation, mm. and therefore. Um, it was very, very important for us to help our neighbors. I know that uh, as we go on, the young ones may not understand why we got involved, but uh, it is uh, through such commemorations that uh, the people are reminded of the role Zambia played uh, during the liberation struggle. Mm. Uh, how, how, how did this end? I mean, at what point did these attacks stop? Um, maybe maybe it would be good to to put it into context. Right. Um, when we attained our own independence in 1964, mm -hmm. uh, we were already part of the Pan-African movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, the spirit of Pan-Africanism guided our forefathers in terms of even taking on board the liberation uh, support. Mm -hmm. And uh, countries, you, you know that uh, by 1965, <clears throat> there was the Unilateral Declaration of Independence. Already that was a reaction in relation to the support to the liberation movements. And uh, so in a nutshell, from almost about 1964, we continued engaging as it relates to the liberation movements until after South Africa attained its independence. Um, I must actually also mention that even after South Africa attained its uh, own independence, we still had, for lack of a term, remnants of um, resistance, uh, which took different forms. For instance, in Mozambique, Renamo, we still had uh, UNITA fighting uh, with uh, MPLA, in, uh, and Zambia still co continued to engage because these were offshoots of the liberation struggles. So. In real sense, we can say post-1991, mm. that is where we actually start seeing in terms of um, the incursions becoming lower. Um, for, yeah. We need to look at it in terms of that you had very strong imperialist, very strong colonial uh, forces and influences, especially coming in from South Africa and uh, also from southern Rhodesia. And that is why sometimes we normally usually refer to this as an apartheid-influenced kind of uh, resistance. Now, also on the flip of it is that um, uh, even when the other countries, for instance, southern Rhodesia got independent and became Zimbabwe, it did not mean that the war had ended because these were basically stepping stones for those who had to get liberated in South Africa, mm. those who had mm. bid to get liberated in Namibia. Mm. So we still continued, directly or indirectly. But the incidences that happened, particularly as it relates to Kavala Manja, and I think in later times we'll be talking about Chukumbi, uh, talking about Mkushi North, North talking about uh, Mulungushi, talking about Sinjela, these kind of incursions, or let me also put Chambeshi and Northwestern Province, because they went all that far mm. in terms of trying to destabilize internally Zambia. All these were part and parcel of the cost that we incurred as a country in terms of supporting the liberation mm. movements. Yeah. I cannot imagine what was left of the village. Um, <laughs> no. you, 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 you went there. <laughs> 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 I, I'm, yeah. I'm just thinking, first of all, this is a village, yes. and then it suffers these kind of attacks. Yeah. Yes. No, the village itself was not bombed. Okay. Yes, the village itself was not bombed. They are bombing the sites where the Imperial Vans were, and where our, our troops were mixed with the mm -hmm. soldiers. The village was, remained intact. Yeah, in terms of how they and so on. Mm -hmm. Yes. In terms of human life, you know. The, the, now, human life yeah. are the ones who were uh, found uh, astray, being uh, when uh, they were running away and so on, the birds were finding them there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yes, um, 
You see, that's why I said earlier on that uh, uh, these people had an idea. They had a lot of time to see mm -hmm. what, is, what was going on. So you find that uh, the most affected was uh, the, there was a camp hospital there, which mm -hmm. was also used by the locals. Mm -hmm. And also uh, there was a, uh, a machine gun position where uh, this soldier tried to repel, but they spotted him by the the yes. Yeah, yes. Hmm. So he tried to disarm him. He tried his best to, to do that, but it was very difficult because uh, the airspace was already covered, covered by, by, by Rhodesia. So that's how he, he also died and uh, just abandoned that, uh, that weapon there. But he tried his best. He could not run. He had to fight until he, he died uh, fighting. So the affected was the camp hospital, the machine gun position. Uh, there was also the, the, the platoon commanders, the, the trains. Uh, uh, yes, well, the one who was the, the commander to that uh, uh, locality. So he, he was also uh, killed in action. In that, he, I think he, he died from some fragment. Uh, those who went to pick the bodies, like you know, wonder. Uh, they discovered that it was not a bullet, actually it was a fragment which hit the tree and then uh, came back to him. Right. Yeah. But the, 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 the arts for the villagers mm -hmm. were not... Uh, those who ran away from the, the, the arts, those were affected. But if they had remained in there, because those arts were not... Uh, I went to Belkia. Yes, they were... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, can, can, can I wonder, you, you, you went to pick the, the bodies? Yes. Paint for, for us the picture. Let me say something weird. Uh, you know how the, the, the people were deployed there, I mean the soldiers were deployed there. Mm. When you look at, when you are at the Walamanja village, mm -hmm. what's inside of it? There's a big hill. It's a, it's a mountain actually. Mm. That's where the, these jets were coming through. Mm. And he, even this the soldier, what is the machine gun, the anti air gun, was seeing the, the aircraft when they are just already over the, the hill. But he managed to shoot uh, one, which went in. Uh, that's how they, they spotted the, the anti air gun. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if he did not open fire, that, that soldier was going to be safe. But by opening fire to that aircraft, they saw that oh, the machine gun is there. That's how they bombed him. Now, when he went to pick the bodies, just entering the village from the Karuru River there, you could meet the, the smell of the, of bodies. the bodies. You had to. That was after uh, uh, how long? That, that after a day or two. Let me say a day or two days. Okay. Yes. After the attack. After the attack. All right. When they, they left. Mm -hmm. Because the last people who were, who were on the scene were the Pearl Troopers waiting for their chopper to come and take them. So, we found the retired village with the bodies, mixed civilians, soldiers, and freedom fighters. The village was smelling, and what we did was we did not manage to collect them and put them at the same. What we used to do, we find the two, two, two bodies there, we temporarily bury them there, bury them there, bury them there, 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 at least to quench the smell. Then we went on later to now properly bury them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the graphic picture mm -hmm. that was coming out from the stories that we were getting, uh, where. Um, it got almost every place littered with people of different ages yeah. and they've uh, decomposing bodies. You're talking about, because it's also part and parcel of a game management, government management area. Mm -hmm. And so you can imagine in terms of also how some of the predators were finding in terms of this mm -hmm. is better food for now. And um, it's um, when you get into the area, you'd actually see quite a deep level of somber especially from the older people who we were in a position to interview right. and um, I think these are some of the memories these are the kind of deep 
sense of losses that we actually found with them. And uh, I think coming to start telling the story started becoming also part and parcel of the healing process. Mm -hmm. um, I remember first time setting step there in 2007, and after the interview, by the time I was trying to get out, I was blocked. Because they needed me to explain and say, why have you come here to tell this story? <laughs> yeah. And why are you reminding us about our past? But we said, look, yes, it's a sad story, but it is a story that has to be told. Um, how we keep those who remain will be the key indicator of how much we appreciate those who sacrificed their lives. And I think that's the transition which we've actually seen, mm -hmm. not just in Kavalamanja, but the entire Luangwa district. And from a filmmaking point of view, this is perhaps something that we'd like to see, especially across the length of the borders of Zambia. Uh, let it be Kaungamashi, let it be in uh, Gwembe, in Manyumunyumbwe areas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because all these were very much involved. Mm. Uh, they were on the front line during that period. All right, so so we, we had survivors there, didn't we? We do have. Okay, so, so and, and, and they're, they're still alive right now. Um, yeah. uh, we do have some survivors who yeah. are still in both Kavalamanja and Kakaro, and we continue to talk to them. Um, others were still young at that particular time. Sadly, as time may pass also, we've also seen quite a number of people who have, um, uh, have, uh, have gone to the other side of life. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, I think what is important is that at least the story was captured and the story still continues to be told. And I think that is also very helpful, especially that much of this was oral history. But with time now, because of this documentation, we are in a position mm -hmm. to have a reference point. As, as, as I was about to say, um, you know, a week ago, I was attending the um, Kuala ceremony in Eastern Province, and and one of the things that they um, that that the old folk there tell you tell you is the fact that we are using the young ones to preserve this history, you, you know, because uh, this culture we ensure that the young ones also understand it. Is that the same in, in in this area? How how are the old folk there, you know, sharing this story with the young people? Yeah, I think maybe. Uh, the coming in of the commemoration yeah. uh, brings everybody on board, mm. starting from the children, yeah. uh, the youth, the elders. So when there's this commemoration, because we, uh, this is especially for us, it is very significant in that uh, it, it brings out that sense of unity. Okay. Yeah, that sense of unity. Not only the... The, the, the issue of looking at our uh, soldiers and the civilians who died in that area, mm. but it is also uh, important in that it brings that uh, closeness, the relationship between the two countries. Mm -hmm. So you find that uh, uh, this is, uh, relationship is strengthened because we come together and we share these experiences. Mm -hmm. So the children also are educated okay. because when you are, you are doing the commemoration, they are there, and the stories, uh, the way it is told is that someone has to explain what happened so that they also mm -hmm. get it. But now, uh, what is going on is that we are now looking at how do we help those who are there now. Mm -hmm. Okay, that thing happened now, what next? So that is where we are going now, to see what can be done for the area. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, I don't know if he... I can mention this, that uh, the, the other last year's commemoration in Zimbabwe donated, uh, that was uh, 26,344 US dollars, so that we, we build the uh, one by two classroom blocks, which has been done, I think it was being shown there. So those are some of the issues which we want the people of that area to benefit. Uh, and uh, not only that, the school was also taken over by uh, the Zambian mm -hmm. Army, right. and it has been uh, renamed from Kavaramanja Primary School to Kavaramanja Memorial Primary School. Mm -hmm. So it is now uh, an army-aided school. Right. Uh, going forward, uh, people of Rwangwa and Kavaramanja in particular will see the difference in the, uh, the life of uh, the people around that area. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Yeah. You, you, you want to add? Yeah, but I was going to add that um, <clears throat> since the commemorations uh, started, uh, it has actually helped in terms of um, linking up with many people of different ages. Mm -hmm. uh, the participation of the schools uh, locally has been promoted so much because that becomes part and parcel of indigenous knowledge. Um, in 2010, we had a very interesting element because, um, for instance, the one who was the Zipra commander mm -hmm. uh, then at Kavala Manja, uh, after watching the documentary, was in a position to come to the place because he says, look, I can't stay away from this. I had to come because this is my story. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we were getting the story about Kavala Manja from the Zimbabwean side from somebody who was actually on the ground. Wow. And that had added value. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. it was uh, really of benefit because everybody who was listening was now seeing things also from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. How would it have meant uh, Kanomwenda? Kanomwenda was coming in uh, to come and salvage the situation mm -hmm. in Kavala Manja. So without that kind of a commemoration, we would not have had an opportunity of knowing about this. Um, we have got many people who have been traveling from different distances, and I think we must thank the Zimbabwean government because they've been consistent mm. in bringing in different levels of personnel, different levels of uh, political officials to come and actually participate in that event and there's a lot of media coverage that has mm -hmm. also been uh, taken off. Um, the National Heritage Commission, uh, National Heritage and Conservation Commission, um, they may not be on this program today but they've played a very important role, especially getting the place uh, declared as a national, of head, a national heritage, site. heritage site in 2019 and uh, that means that the place also has to be protected, it has to be promoted. Uh, I do know that uh, conserv uh, conversations are going on at a very high level to establish a military museum uh, in the area. Mm -hmm. So all this is to making sure that this history doesn't die. Right. And uh, I think within, within the ambit of our capacities, that seems to have a very good direction. We do hope that uh, maybe going forward this is uh, a history that has to come through the mainstream education. Um, we've always had the debate that we do learn a lot about histories from other areas other countries. and we do not have very much of our own and I think mm -hmm. it is important that some of this is uh, brought into our mainstream education oh. system. Um, this year is unique. We haven't gone physically on the ground um, mm -hmm. but um, we, um, yesterday I was interested to find that my vicar general from uh, Chipata Diocese drove all the way uh, from Eastern Province to go to Kavala Manja and pay homage. Now that is the kind of pull factor that is already happening in Kavala Manja because of people getting to know uh, who are, what is happening. Then one more aspect which I think is very critical from the design of the commemorations. These are actually led by the district administration in Luangwa right. together with the local committees that side. And the purpose is for them to popularize this thing. What if we are not there? Does this thing die? No. It should always continue to proceed. Right. Thank you. I'd like to get your I mean, it's interesting that you, you, you went there to get the bodies, you know. Uh, today when you go back to that, that place, um, what kind of memories, um, you know, come to your mind? Uh, not me who was there and they picked me the bodies. I want to say uh, better memories, actually. Okay. Very sad memories. Because at a point that... That under that tree, there was somebody like this, 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 this. Under that place, under and, that and, place. and you, you knew some of these, some of these troops were died, right? Some yes, of, some I, of our soldiers. Some of them I knew yeah. them. Yes, I would tell them that this is a couple of soldiers who was there, like that. So those memories, when I get to Kavalamanja, they come fresh to me. You see, mm -hmm. at the time the bodies were being collected, actually, if you were having a, a, a soft heart you could not do the job which we did we just sit down and start crying did you cry? I'm a soldier that's the answer I can give you okay yes soldiers don't cry 
Don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We will we'll, 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 we'll put you to test. Uh, we'll take you to Kabbalah. I'm almost sending it to you already. <laughs> but again, Dennis, don't cry. <laughs> I, I'd like to draw attention uh, to the screen uh, and just uh, um, show a few clips, um, you know, uh, which I'd like you to explain, uh, Mr. Yezi, uh, in terms of what exactly they're, they're telling us. I hope that we can have those, you know, clips on the screen uh, with three of them, isn't it? Um, and, and I'd like you just to tell us the story that these clips are telling us uh, as we uh, go on with this broadcast and yeah. hope the director can give us the, the first clip uh, on, on, on the screen yeah. um, that one what is this, what's going on here? What, what are you trying to tell us? Already you can see that it's 44 years after Kavala Manja, uh, 14 years of commemoration. The vehicles are heading to Kakaro, mm -hmm. uh, where we have a candlelight service that, that takes place um, every first day of the two-day commemoration. And uh, at Kakaro is uh, where we had civilians who were bombed and uh, killed in a very uh, sad way and uh, buried in a mass grave and um, they were, we only put up a memorial site in 2008 mm -hmm. uh, at the commencement of the commemorations. Right. What you are seeing there is part and parcel of the ceremony that takes place at Kavala Manja right. on an annual basis and that is a salute mm -hmm. that is uh, being provided. Um, so the way we've crafted it is the first day is for the candlelight service and then on the second day we get into the full program where all the speeches take place and um, what we have been doing now is taking ourselves away from just the commemorative activities but starting to see in terms of how can we genuinely also start changing the lives of the people. Mm. Um, if you ask almost all of us here from the time we first went to Kavala Manja mm -hmm. and where we are today, I think it's really a significant change that we've actually seen All in right. the area. Um, to give you an idea, for instance, we, whenever we got to Luangwa, we did not have any form of communication. But now there's a communication tower, which mm. is actually right in Kavala Manja. We did not have, um, the health facilities were very small, but um, right now the rural health center, which is in that area, has been expanded thanks to support from Child Fund, mm. uh, an NGO which operates in that area, and meaning that they're improving in terms of access to health. Mm. We are talking about uh, improvement to the education system, System. Already it has been allotted in terms of a one by two classroom block, which has actually been constructed. We are hoping that within, um, within the next coming few months it will be operational right. and hope possibly we can hand it over to, to the Zambian, uh, we can hand it over mm. uh, to the people of Kavala. So, uh, yeah. uh, and, and we get to that. So yeah. I can see graves here, you know. Uh, because yeah, you want to give us more information. And also, I saw the army, you know, uh, taking part in the candlelight station. What, what role do you play, so to speak? Oh, I see. Um, just like I as mentioned, the first day we have the candlelight where mm. we, uh, we thank God for whatever God has given us and also to celebrate the lives of those who, who died that time. Mm. And then we, uh, from there we, we, we have the, the actual uh, wreath okay. where okay. the dignitaries now are given an opportunity to lay their wreath at the, the, the graves. Mm. So we start with uh, Kakaro, where they buried the civilians who were killed in that vehicle which I mentioned, mm. which they mistook to be the vehicle which was uh, 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 coming to reinforce. Then the, the second day now we go to Kavaramanta. Uh, that is the picture there. Mm. So that one now, uh, uh, these are the, uh, the people who are uh, attending. Then the graves you are seeing, we have got two graves there. Uh, the first grave is uh, where they buried the Zimbabweans, mm -hmm. and then the Zambians on the other yeah, uh, grave. Mm -hmm. Then in the middle we have got the cenotaph. Now that's where we uh, we have written the names of all those who died at that time. Right. So that is the place where they they lay the roots. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right, uh, and Mr. Colonel uh, Mwenda, you, you also I saw a picture of you. Um, you. You always go there to take part in this in this uh, anniversary, isn't it? It's true. Most of the time when I'm okay, I, I go there mm -hmm. because uh, I take part in briefing the people. All right. What ha uh, happened? So showing them the areas, what was here, what was there, and what like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and share with me the interest you get from members of the of that community in terms of them wanting to hear from you what really happened. So you find when, when I'm briefing the, the people there, mm -hmm. it's in a group, even the civilians are there, the ch children like that, like that. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly, 
I'm briefing those dignitaries. Okay. Who we'll, we'll go there and say to, to see what actually happened. Let me say that I'm briefing the... The villagers. The villagers, no. Right. I'm briefing those... Uh, the, 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 the visitors. The yeah. visitors, uh, if we were the minister there, mm -hmm. we, we, we brief him. We could, uh, like the, the Zimbabweans who come out, so mm -hmm. we, we brief them on, right. on the ground. All right. Let's go to the next clip. Uh, again, uh, Sayezi, I'd like to um, endow you in this one, just to give us what exactly is happening, what, what, what the significance of this clip is when it comes to uh, the commemoration. Um, I noticed there's the High Commissioner speech there. Uh, yes. Um, firstly, before the High Commissioner speech, that is, uh, that is part of the candlelight service, mm -hmm. uh, which was at, um, at Kakaro. And then when we come to the specific speech that is being provided by the Zimbabwean High Commissioner, mm. uh, Her Excellency mm. Madam Charit Charamba, mm. uh, was basically her first or her inaugural uh, speech at the Gavaramanja, given the transitions that had taken place. And uh, she's very supportive, and uh, in there she was basically re-emphasizing the support that the Zimbabwean government was providing, particularly mm. in collaboration with the Zambia Army, for the construction of the one-by-two uh, classroom block. Um, so they are already, you can see, practical documentation of the developments that are taking right. place. Uh, I see, I see there's, there's, there's a, a, yeah. a school choir in, in the, in the, yes, in the I think that collage, is, so and, and that is a very interesting aspect, because mm. you find that the schools, the choral groups, have been composing different kinds of songs of liberation oh, wow. uh, in that area. You've All got right. the younger ones uh, who we used to call the Jirinja boys. <laughs> <Okay>. Amazing. <laughs> when you have the scouts movement in <laughs> other areas, yeah. you find that the military drills that the Jirinja boys would give you, it's amazing. Mm. You yeah. know? So it was entertainment, but also it is imbued information. And I'm hoping that uh, going into next year, we can also have the Jirinja boys back. Okay. And uh, if ZMBC will be available, perhaps they also provide to the next what is actually taking place on the ground. All right. Um, again, let's get to the, to the other clip, the last clip, because uh, we've got three of them, um, which are very key when it comes to telling this particular story. Um, and this one obviously is going to be uh, one that will go a long way in really telling the aspects of development and things of that sort in this particular area, isn't it? Yes, I will ask um, Brigadier General uh, Muke to come in uh, because I think this is a very collaborative yes. effort. Okay. Yeah, there, um, maybe I will run through as the clips are please, going please, so please. that we know what is going on. Yeah. Yes, this day uh, we had the, the, the General from Air Force, mm -hmm. the Zimbabwe Air Force, who was sent by the Commander of the Defense Force of Zimbabwe mm -hmm. to come and hand over uh, that check of. Uh, uh, that is 26,000 uh, US dollars. Mm. So it was mentioned during the commemoration last year that uh, uh, they, will, uh, they, they, they have donated that. And the, on the same day, we had to do the groundbreaking. So we involved the chief uh, there to do the groundbreaking uh, ceremony, which we, we shall see soon on the same uh, clip. Mm. That is just uh, one of the generals who was very happy that he, uh, <laughs> we are getting support from our uh, yeah. uh, sister forces. All right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but, 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 but what, what, what kind of um, talking points came from this speech? You know. Primarily, the emphasis was uh, from the air marshal uh, was, uh, was that um, Zambia hosted. Uh, the liberation movements and uh, for specifically for Kavalamanja, uh, the Zipra forces and uh, post the war uh, as a, not necessarily as a token of appreciation but as a continued contribution mm -hmm. um, investing into education was critical. All right. Yes, so you can already see in terms of looking at it from uh, taking a futuristic uh, dimension. All right. Um, away from, from the clips, I'm, I'm just wondering now, because I mean, um, this is a good story. Um, and and, and you, you were right, Mr. Yezi, when you said, uh, to some extent, we've not told this story. It's untold, this story. This masterpiece of history, so to speak, has remained un untold. Maybe it's been told, but not to, um, you know, expectations that we would, 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 would love. Are we seeing a movie, you know, coming to the fore, produced by, by Yezi Arts? Um, yes, okay. we are. 
it may go beyond a movie. Um, we are sharing our experiences, uh, experiences in mm -hmm. terms of engaging with the untold stories of the liberation struggles. Uh, people, I know sometimes reading cultures may not be the best, but we still have to produce those. In terms of a movie, in fact, the earlier part was to do a film. Okay. It was going to be called in called Yamkwe Zalamba, War of Sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And uh, because we've been enjoying quite some good civil military relationship, uh, we do expect that this could potentially be a collaboration. Mm -hmm. uh, already we are venturing into other areas uh, which are of, of interest, uh, which we can talk about at a different time. So, yes, we do, but you know, film is expensive, but um, I'm sure because we have a good collection of what happened that side. Uh, it would be good for us to showcase. I'm just thinking um, this is going to be a very expensive production. It could be, but yeah. I think what is more important is the will to have it done. Okay. Uh, scripts do exist. We do have uh, institutional memories. We do have um, upcoming artists. We so I think perhaps the time is ripe to okay. get it done. You want to give us a specific? I mean, this is. A, I'm excited already to hear that there'll be a film that's going to be uh, to be produced. Uh, is there any time frame tied to it? Um, we'll talk about it the next time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want right. to tie myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very smart, very yeah. smart. But uh, yeah. Colonel Mwenda, you know, um, as we, we near the uh, end of this particular um, um, interaction, for our young people who are watching right now, why should they appreciate this piece of history in a view? In my view, the young ones, right, it's only unfortunate that you haven't written uh, a book that you can be sent into the schools or into military schools mm -hmm. so that they can get the story from there. Because as we are, you know, one day we shall we want to be there. That is story that means you too, or to be dead. You see. So, I've been, most of the time I've been, when I was director of I've been moving with these people from Zimbabwe, the former freedom fighters, to show them where the, where the places, where the camps were. That's how these people come to know me. So, like, you go to Rimahashi in Zimbabwe, has been a, a personal friend on, the, on these matters. So, wherever, each place we, we went, where there are these graves, the civilians would come along and you should tell them a, a story, what happened here and so on. So, so they get it from there. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, and do you plan on writing a book yourself? Because I mean, you, you, you were a frontline, uh, you know, individual, and you, you have more facts than you know. I, I have already started on that. Uh, mm. I need support. All right. Yes, okay. I've already started. All right. Awesome. What, what kind of in fact, I, in fact, I, I'm even in the team uh -huh. of writing a book of the history of defense forces. Oh, I see. Yes. All right. I'm the main, uh, how do we say, co the contributor or... Editor? Okay. No, uh, contributor. many stories. Okay, they come all right. From, I see. Uh, yes. All right, great. Yeah. Brigadier General. Um, in, in terms of you know preserving this this story, how, how can we, how can we do that as a country? You think? I see. Thank you very much. Um, this is a very good uh, story, just like he has mentioned that uh, we don't have these in schools or in military schools. Yeah. But efforts are, are being done uh, to uh, collect all these uh, stories and uh, put them together, mm. so that we, we look at what happened and uh, how can we avoid such situations in the future. Mm. Uh, of course, uh, um, the tactics of those days is different from the tactics of nowadays, yeah. but we, we can learn something from there. Yeah. Uh, so something is being done. Uh, we shall still get, we have all the details from both the locals, those who are involved, and the uh, people like him. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I was to mention, you know, he was coming to reinforce coming from all the way from Chipata, because he was based in Chipata. Okay, so the soldiers who died so were from Maragan Barracks yeah. in, 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 in Osaka. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So they were coming to, to, to change those others until they found themselves in that uh, situation. Uh, but it's, something is being done to, all right. to write down this story. So he was coming to reinforce something. Yes. I, I guess, uh, Colonel Mwenda, when you, when you reached there, you were thinking, that this could have been me. <laughs> 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 it's true, because you see, the way it happened. <laughs> 
Uh, my unit uh, for Zeta, this is at the Gonda Balax, mm. in Chipata. We are preparing to come and deliver to Zeta. Second battalion. Oh, so, so you, you Changing shifts. Sure. Yes. Changing yes. shifts, yes. Yeah. By the time we are getting into, in fact, let me mention this that I was the one of the, the, the reconnaissance party to come and see how the two Zedala was deployed. So as we reached the Rwanga Bridge, it's when we were seeing the jets bombing. So we didn't do any, nothing, we went back to get the report to the CO. Actually, the place where we are going, you see, this is what is happening. But so much, the following day, we said off. Then we are stopped at Kacholola. Don't enter the danger zone. Come to Lusaka. So we had to come to Lusaka. After three days or so, it's when we went back into Kavala Manja. You could imagine if we had gone in, that means they were going to be two battalions facing the, the straps. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. There were there were a lot of funerals in Harakan that time. Very sad. There were a lot of funerals, and the, just like he's mentioning, they were told not to move in because the airspace was already was uh, taken over by Zimbabwe. You know, we were just by the border, mm -hmm. and just from the hill there, from Zimbabwe inside, already we were in in Zambia. So our air force was uh, uh, unable to. To, to come out because the airspace was already covered. Already covered by yes, by but I've got something which maybe uh, I need right. to, to, to mention that uh, this commemoration is very significant for us. It is a very significant undertaking mm -hmm. uh, to strengthen our relation, as I mentioned. But then, the building of the one by two block is uh, uh, something which we appreciate. We thank the government of Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm for that uh, undertaking and uh, it couldn't have come at uh, any other better way than this one where the government has uh, uh, now brought the free education mm -hmm. so definitely in the schools there are a lot of uh, students mm -hmm. so those blocks who, 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 who also help the, the only thing I can say is that just to to, 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 to request for from the um, corporate world, corporate world mm. for desks okay. because now the, the classroom is, is on I think this week we are painting and uh, it will be done so what will be required are just uh, desks but we will mm. still go around and uh, knock on uh, and certain no, no. doors right. yes, for that. Uh, I mean it's a very interesting narrative but uh, I'm afraid we have to drop it here for now. I, I want to thank you very much for coming um, and Mr. Uh, Yezi, we, we need a movie um, or, or whatever you're going to, a film, whatever you're going to call it. We need this. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much thank to you all for coming. Yeah, very much. Thanks very and thanks to you for, uh, folks for watching. Uh, we do value your viewership. Please enjoy the rest of uh, our broadcast as we uh, celebrate International Children's Day of Broadcasting. My name is Brian Malamba. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.